record. All right, so we're going to record this for those who weren't able to join us this morning. So once again, a big thank you and welcome to our own Barbara Wander and uh, Mabel Valdivia from Fon Jose. So Barbara, would you mind um, kicking us off, uh, sharing a little bit about your work in Haiti, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll be passing it to Mabel and we'll be saving some time at the end for some Q&A. Okay, let me start with very, very brief history of Haiti. Um, it's on the island called Hispaniola, um, and supposedly Columbus landed there and, and discovered the place. And um, so Spain said, hey, this is ours. They didn't care about the folks that already lived there. He said it belonged to Spain. Spain couldn't get enough folks to come and live there. And so France comes along and says, aha, we can get part of this. And they took the west third of, of, the, of the island that looks like a backward sea. Um, now, France couldn't get enough of their folks to come. And so they brought in slaves. Um, then fast forward, um, the slaves organized, they became free and, and Haiti is very proud of the fact that, that um, they were the, the first country that, that did that. Um, however, Spain had, I mean, France, they, they've been paying reparations for years and years and years to them and all sorts of things like that. Um, that brings us up kind of to where we are. Um, 20 something years ago, I, well, I, I retired and I wanted to go to each of the countries where my students came from, which was like 10 or 12 different countries and, and do a, a service project for a, couple, a month or so. And the first place I worked it out was Haiti. And so I went to Haiti and was there for a month and worked with an order, which reminds me of Loretto. It's um, an indigenous order founded by a Haitian priest and a Haitian woman. Um, and after that, I came back and back and long story short, um, Haiti is the only country I've gotten to. I haven't gotten to Vietnam, Laos, uh, Salvador, every place else where the kids came from. So I think Haiti is it. I, I work pretty much with the sisters. I try not to start any projects in Haiti. I try to help Haitians with their projects. Um, and have kind of been through it thick and thin. I'm, I'm very much still hoping, see, I'm a little Haitian now, so I'm still hoping that Sister Lopes will join us. She's one of the sisters. Um, the order is called Petit Sir de Saint Therese de L'Enfant Jésus. And I keep telling them it's too long, but then I remember Loretto has that foot of the cross thing at the end too. So, you know, that's not so bad. Um, the, the order has 42 missions throughout Haiti. They have schools, clinics, hospitals, orphanages, places for the elderly, um, professional schools for young women, um, elementary high schools. They have one teacher preparation center. They have an AIDS and TB clinic, um, all sorts of things, peasant education, and a lot on, on agriculture. Um, and I, I think I'm gonna stop there and, and turn it over to Mabel. Now let me quickly, um, Mabel, you're gonna to have to tell me how many years ago, but I know it was over 20 when Fon Jose was going to start. Um, Loretto lent Fon Jose uh, some money and it was a sizable amount um, to help him get started. Fon Jose is, is uh, well, I'll let Mabel do that part. Um, so they got started and for some anniversary, like maybe 200 or something like that, Loretto said, hey, we're going to forgive that debt. You never have to pay that money back. So um, and there have been uh, Loretto people who have served on the on the um, Fancose board in the past as well. So let me turn it over to Mabel, who can tell you a bit about Fancose, and then we can get back to just some discussion. Well, thank you, everybody. Oh, of course, I'm going to have to sneeze um, right as I get on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, so much for inviting me, for having me join you today. It's a real honor and pleasure to be able to talk to you about Franco Day and the, as Barbara mentioned, the longstanding 
relationship that we have um, with with the Loretto's. And so um, I'm sorry that it's this kind of um, unfortunate emergency that has brought us together to have this conversation, but I'm grateful for it at the same time to be able to, to, to speak with you. So Font Jose has been in Haiti uh, since 1994, and it was founded by a Haitian priest, Father Joseph. I don't know if any of you know him or have heard of him or through the years he's maybe visited. He thought his mom was a Tima Shan, so she was a market woman. And as he grew, he realized that rural people and uh, rural poor people in particular really didn't have a way to really kind of augment their voice for the needs of their economic, their economic needs. And so he founded Juan Jose on the idea along with other uh, peasant farmers and uh, advocates that it was an organization so that the rural poor could really have a collective voice in the economic direction of the country and advocate for themselves. Father Joseph still remains very active in Juan Jose. He actually is in the region, um, in the northern region of, of, of Fondois, and where there's a university and a hospital and has gone on to establish other entities that really focus on, again, the development of the rural, of the rural poor. Um, Franco Day has uh, three organizations that are part of the Franco Day family. One of them is the foundation, which was originally started, like I said, back in the mid 90s. Then uh, in learning about the importance of access to financial services, Juan Jose created a microfinance entity. So what does that mean? Many of you probably are familiar with microcredit where women get together with loans, the model of Bangladesh with Mohammed Unis. We went to Bangladesh, uh, learned the, the model, brought it to Haiti, adapted it to the Haiti context. And today, Juan Jose has Juan Jose Financial Services, my Creole and my French are both terrible, and I'm not going to try to attempt to say the name in, in that language, but it's what we call SFF. And SFF is Haiti's number one lending and savings institution for, for the rural poor. It is the largest microfinance entity in all of Haiti. We have 200,000 savings clients, just over 60,000 loan clients, over 80% of our clients are women and the organizations, all three of them, the foundation, SFF, the bank, and Fonco's USA, are all headed up by women. I think that's pretty remarkable in a country that uh, where women have to not only be moms and aunts and grandmothers and all of those things, but they're also the backbone of the Haitian economy. Tima Shans are the ones that you see in the markets when you, if you've traveled to Haiti, they are the ones that really are leading financial um, uh, financial activities throughout the country, and the ones that really are people lean on to feed their families. So it's pretty it's pretty remarkable. There are other financial institutions like Franco Day throughout Haiti, but like I said, Franco Day is the largest and the most well known. Um, so that's the context of that, and. I, you know, want to talk, I think a little bit today, we'll talk about the emergency, how Franco Day has responded. And I should say that um, Franco Day in the United States does this work. We talk to people about the work that we're doing in Haiti. We also take uh, social loans like the, the Loretto's gave us way back in the day. Um, right now, our social loan portfolio that is managed out of our office is approximately $3 million. And what that means is that we take loans from individuals or religious orders, and then we on lend that to the bank in Haiti, and they use that money, and they have used that money to create the loan fund that they lend out to clients uh, throughout the country. Franco Jose has 47 branches throughout Haiti, so there really isn't a place that you can go in Haiti where you will not find Franco Jose. And we not only have branches, but we're also actively involved with um, digital uh, transfer of funds, so Mon Cash, and in the United States, when you send money to Haiti via Western Union or MoneyGram, it is more often than not that the person will pick up their contribution at a Franco Day branch. Um, we have also just gotten 
the approval from the central bank to be a formal regulated financial institution in Haiti. And that is really a big deal because we have to, we've had to adhere to all of the regulations, um, financial regulations that regular banks adhere to with the understanding that we are a double bottom line organization and that any money that Francoze makes for its sustainability it's reinvested back into our clients and into the services that we provide. So that's kind of a very top level view of the organization. And I'm happy to, to answer questions later on, but Stacey, I don't know if you have anything that you want me to clarify on or, or focus more on. Thank you so much, Mabel. Um, actually, yes, I, I have um, a lot of questions um, that I think would be helpful for everybody to hear more about. Um, before we do, we had very special guests um, be able to join us. I'm going to ask Barbara to help me introduce Sister Lopes, and I believe she's joined by someone else. Bonjour, comment ye? Sir Lopes, pensez ou gayem mute? Oh, take your mute off, Lopes. In the bottom left-hand corner, it has a it has a red line through it. Click on it. Oh, let me get over to you. Can you can't unmute her? Can you, um, Stacy? I am asking um, her to unmute, okay. but they might need to find it. Um, would you like to tell everybody? Um, hopefully, while they're trying to figure that out, Barbara, yeah. um, who Sister Lopes is. Sister Lopes is um, one of the petit sir, the little sisters, and I don't know, she might have Sister Denise with her, I'm not, I'm not sure. In, in the meantime, wait, let me get back. Oh, here we are. Oh, oh merci. Oh, oh James, Buffett, Buffett, James. Merci. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moi content, on peut voir you. We are with you. Well, Baba. Uh, Sister Denise? Yes. Yes. Oh, can you turn the or, or put the, the laptop farther back so we can see both of you? Ah. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Can you tell us where you are? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Uh, are, are you in? Am I muted? No. Yes, we are in the general administration at Brochette. At Brochette. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm going to try. Would you like to maybe tell just a little tiny bit about what happened in the last earthquake to Baradair and Vubu Dakan, Pemel? Yeah. Okay, just a little, make, keep it real okay. short. Okay, nice to see everyone. And uh, we are happy to be here to, with, with you to tell you what happened. Thank you for inviting us to that meeting, to this meeting in uh, uh, September, no, August. August 15, uh, we have a big earthquake in the south of Haiti, where we have about four missions who got damaged. And uh, some of the sisters live under the tent now, under tent, they are under tent. So they, lo they lost school, convent, clinic. Fortunately, nobody died. Everybody is alive. We thank God for this. Now, our biggest need is to find funds to rebuild those stuff. And we have also stuff from 2010 that we need to rebuild. Now this come to get more, we have more challenges for now. Okay. okay. Is Sister Thank Regina you. Is, will be here too, Sister Regina? Okay. Barbara. 
Uh, okay. I would like to ask you if Sister Regina will be here too. Sister Regina, I don't know. Yes. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, you, you mean from, from St. Joseph? Yes. Yes, I have heard from her. Um, I'll, I'll tell you later, it's good news. All right, okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I was trying to hold up a map that okay. shows the- Where is happened? Oh, I gotta get back to, now I can't find. Yes. Oh, there, see. Well, it, it was happened. Okay. From this, from this to this. Oh, just a minute. Okay, so Bottom. the earthquake was down here and affected yes. this area. The yeah. earthquake in Dumiel Dis was yeah. here, but even though it was yeah. smaller in number, it affected this whole area. This. No, this is this, the bottom, in the bottom. Yes, from this, from this to this. It, it really started in Leogon here. Okay. In, but it spread yeah. out and yeah. had damage all over the place. So, yes. um, it, it, you it, have it, the, the, this earthquake, although it was bigger, there are not as many people who live here, and that's what saved exactly. an awful lot of lives. Yeah. Because they just weren't there. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you, Sister Lopes and Sister Denise. Um, yes. Before we, we also have a guest with us this morning, Mabel Valdivia with um, Foncose. Um, and before we um, get back to talking about that more specifically, is there anyone who has some questions um, for the sisters? Um, since we weren't sure if they'd be able to join us, we're so grateful that um, you made that work. We know that there's a lot of challenges around that. Um, is there anybody who would like to ask any questions? I was wondering how you spell Bon Jose. <laughs> Uh, I'm putting all different spellings in and nothing's coming up. <laughs> so. Thanks, Maureen. Yep, there's, if you look in the chat, there's a link um, to the okay. website, but it is um, F-O-N-K-O-Z-E dot org. Okay. Bon Jose. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. The question, Barbara, repeat the question for me. Oh, okay. Um, Question for Fan Jose. Question Wagayan for you. The question I have for you. Okay. Moi travaille avec Tisser pour 20 années. I've been working with little sisters for 20 years. Um, in that, in those 20 years, you have three earthquakes, many hurricanes, yeah. um, many problems politically. Exactly. How? How do all of the sisters continue working? Pukisa, why Pukisa Upadi? Bye bye, Mwefini. Why don't the sisters say no? Mwefini. So uh, why? I'm asking the sisters, how do they keep going when this keeps happening? Uh, I've only known them for 20 years. They've been going for about 80 years. Um, how do they continue on? Why don't they just say, oh, finished, we can do that. We, we, we make a, a commitment to God. This is mission. This is the work of God that we do, you know, to, to go to the mountain to find those people who nobody think about them. This is, this is really a good work for people. And it is, it will be a, come on, a, what you say, betray, when you try quelqu'un? A contract? No, um, betray, I don't know how you say that in English. Uh, uh, it would be, a, a, a traizion would be like, it would be like, uh, treason, treason is not the right word, but like when you give up on somebody, it would be oh. like you backstag them. You don't, you don't treat them properly. Okay, this is a mission. This is a congregation. We, 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 we couldn't leave the people behind and we run, no. It will be really bad. Eh? I think God won't be happy with us. <laughs> the work of God, we do. 
why we are really grateful to all our benefactors who try to help us to respond to people who are in a great need, you know? Mm -hmm. And Barbara is exceptional <laughs> about it. Uh, we can do with that. Uh, we don't have word to, to, to say thank you to Barbara, who tried to get some help for us to help those who count on you. Well, but and the other the other faces, yeah. the other faces that Sister Lopes and Sister Denise are seeing, these are some of the individuals who who have been helping you for over 20 years. Um, and and the Loretto community has been yes. very, very supportive. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know Thank some... You. Go ahead. Thank you, Dorange, also. Yes. OK. Uh, Thank you there... so much, sisters. And Thank you, Barbara. Yes, are there any other questions for Sister Lopes, Sister Denise? Well, I don't know. Uh, it looks like Therese has a question. And how you are going to continue to work to help us to continue to we, to do to do the, the many challenge that we have right now. We're, we're about building stuff. Okay, we're building. we're working as hard as we can, and we're sending another wire to you next week. Thank you. Thank um, you. But You're now welcome. now other people on the screen have questions for you, Sister Denise. Yes, yes. Let's listen to Therese. Okay. Yeah, Therese, did you have a question? I think you have to unmute. Good morning, sisters, and especially hello to Sister Lopes, since I remember seeing you many years ago now. Um, but sisters, I know from Barbara that many times parents will leave their children with you. Uh, do you have an orphanage there or do the children stay with you for many years or what happens to them when they leave them with you? We have an orphanage, but orphanages, home for elderly too, but in each of our mission, you can find two, three, four children with us. Because all the time we have cases. Right now we have two children. One of them eh, eh, don't have, uh, doesn't have uh, father, mother. The other no, no, no mother, only father. But the way that this the, this child live, uh, we can't leave her behind. We bring we bring them with us. Right now they are they are with us in the mother house. Okay. We need to find out where we are going to put them. All of our mission have children. And and when when the children are at your missions, they go to school and you give them yes. food and clothing and, and love? The thing we do, send them to school until they get a degree in the college. Okay. Mm, yeah. That's a long time. Yes. I has has ever any one of the, the orphans joined the, the, your congregation? Right now, no. Yeah, no. thank you. And uh, we have a, a children who finish their study who work with us. Yes, they work with us. We have a doctor, she, she's working with us right now. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Therese, for your question. Um, and Teresa has a question. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad you could be here with us. I wanted to know, uh, you were describing uh, some of your plans to recover and, and rebuild uh, from the damage of the earthquakes and probably also hurricanes and and maybe also I, there may be some some situations of uh, gang violence as well uh, not too far from you I was wondering if you have any uh, plans or ideas about how to uh, when you rebuild to make it more resistant or or more resilient to uh, 
these disasters in the future, if you have ideas or dreams about how you would like to, to be stronger and have a stronger uh, defense from, from future disaster that, that could use some help. Right now we discuss, we need to rebuild our staff in a, a no more, oh, we could have uh, two story, but the last one, the second will be in metal sheet, a roof, light roof. Mm -hmm. You understand? No more, no more cement, yeah. metal roof. Yeah. We are going to do. But one of the one of the problems is the way you build to protect against a hurricane is not good for for um, a, a, a an earthquake. Okay. They're they're counterproductive, mm -hmm. and um, so we're we're trying to find something that will accommodate both. Okay. If but if if, if I may, it, Barbara, I'm sorry. If I may, um, I would like to offline connect with you and with the sisters. We had a very good conversation last night with several organizations um, that are in Haiti, that are Haitian, that are working on housing and rebuilding structures that are going to be um, withstanding natural disasters because they're not going to change in Haiti, right? Climate change is real. Haiti's on a fault line. Hurricanes are going to be worse as the years go by. And so I think it would be helpful to make sure that we connect the sisters and the orders to the housing clusters that are being managed right now um, to, for rebuilding because of this earthquake. Um, so I, please, let's, please let's not forget that and let's connect after this so we can make that happen. Okay, we will. Thank you so much, Mabel. I have a question for Barbara. And do you have some engineer who, who is who are good at that? If you operate operate reunion, new Okay, okay. After the meeting, we'll talk. Yes, Mabel. This is so wonderful. Thank you, um, sisters, for being willing to respond to some questions. And I love um, that we're already making some uh, connections between groups. That is the goal um, of Immigration Spotlight, that we're, you know, educating our community and then making connections for action. Um, I, I'm wondering if I can um, probe Mabel for some more information um, while we're all gathered here together. Um, specifically, if I can pivot a little bit and ask Mabel to share some of um, kind of the context with Funk Jose and it might help us all um, see some more opportunities for um, shared work around that intersectionality. Um, I'm wondering, at Mabel, if you can tell us about there's like a family of three organizations. Um, you were talking about the, the banks and the work. If you can tell us more about um, that work to alleviate the poverty in Haiti. Yeah, thank you for that, Stacey. So Funko Day, like I said early on, has um, is, is a family of three, right? So there's a foundation that really focuses on all the social programs. I know the sisters were talking about um, people living in very rural areas and difficult to access. And Funko Day's mission has always been to really work with rural people because urban areas are equally important and there's poverty in urban areas, but urban areas have a different dynamic, right, than, 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 than rural areas. And in Haiti, a lot of people live in, in rural areas. And one of the programs that we have is um, that started out in the Central Plateau many, many years ago that we brought to Haiti from Bangladesh was the CLM program, which is really pathway to a better life. And that program is one where we identify a cohort of individuals by doing community assessments together with local community leaders who identify the, the, the families in their communities that are most at risk. That really, are, you look at them because you really look for them because oftentimes they're not even seen. And, and by, by what I mean is like, they're so poor, they're so kind of, have an inability to even get to a basic level of, of education for their children, basically having maybe even if they're lucky one meal a day to eat. And so the community identifies who these people are and Franco Day comes in with our, what we call case managers, 
but really they're like social workers. Um, and we spend 18 months with them from identifying, providing them um, economic activities like a goat, pig, chicken. So they start generating funds. We give them a cash infusion upfront so that they're, they're not using their economic activity to sell so that they can eat. So they have enough money to eat. They have an economic activity. They work on ensuring that their homes are stable. So do they have a roof? Do they have a uh, latrine? Are their kids going to school? How many meals are you eating in a day? Are you, have you become literate over the course of 18 months? And so that program is like literally a bi-weekly follow-up with these clients so that they are successful over the course of 18 months. And once they graduate in the program, which there's a huge graduation ceremony and it's really amazing. And, and women, you can see their transformation from when they first start to when they graduate. And then they determine, hey, do I really wanna be an entrepreneur in my community? Can I join a, a lending group of Franco days? Or is lending not a thing for me? And really what I wanna do is something else. We just are enabling folks to have choice, to be able to make a decision that is not just what am I able to even feed my children today? Is my choice today between having medication or feeding my child? Is it, do I go to work or feed my child? We even help these women um, in rural areas be able to go to hospitals. We refer kids that are malnourished. But then when we go to the hospital, we don't just say, hey, go to the hospital in Mirbele, for instance. Um, we actually go with them because oftentimes people in rural areas will go to a hospital and will just sit outside and wait. And they will spend the entire day at the hospital and no one will see them and they will come home in the afternoon and not have had any services. And so we, our, our social workers, sit with, the, with our clients and make sure that they're getting and accessing the services that they, that they need. It is probably our uh, showcase program, but it is actually the most tra transformational in many ways because in over a year and a half, you can see how these families just change completely from being really in a really difficult, dark space to being able to be seen among their community and know where it is that they can get the things that they need. I have a question too for you. Baba. <laughs> we, uh, we have many, many little sisters in this, from the South who are in our community. We have parents who lost their home. How, if we could find $5,000 per family to rebuild those houses for family? Yeah. Um, it, will be, it, will be, it will be possible? We, well, Pakone, um, decision comma who we tell is a um, cob po um, the, the decision for how you want to use the money that we raise is essentially yours so when we send you the money we have already sent you two wires of money and next week we will start another one to you and it is your decision how you want to use that money, all we ask is that you tell us how you use the money, the same okay. as the last two earthquakes. Okay, this is, a, this is a request just for families. If you send a wire, you said this is for family. No. Family no. lost houses. No. That need to rebuild. No. No, I, if, if we send you money, the money is going to Petit Sur, to your congregation. And you have to make the decision. Will you um, restauration pour, pour hospital at Baradair or for the school at, at Vubu Dakin mm -hmm. or for some of the students' houses? or for your sister's houses. Okay. The decision should be yours. Okay. Um, but we need to know how you use the money. Trompra? We are preparing the report to send to you about that. Thank you. Because if, if we can tell, and, and, and maybe some people who are joining us, 
if we can tell people who have donated how their donation was used, okay. I think sometimes they say, oh, that was good. I would like to give again. Okay. If we, don't, if we do not tell them how the money was used, maybe they don't want to give you any more. Okay. okay. Thank we you. are working on it. Okay. All right. So happy to see you. That's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy this could be a little reunion too. Thank you, sisters. And thank you, Barbara, for, for clarifying all of that. Um, it makes me wonder too, um, Mabel, you know, about the fundraising that happens with Foncose. And, um, you know, I'm wondering if some of the efforts I think I know the answer to this question, but wondering if you could expand on, you know, how efforts have ramped up recently, you know, in response to these disasters. Um, but also just, I know we have so many active uh, people on this call who might be wondering, okay, so how do we support all of this good work? Um, you know, we're, we know we have Barbara so that we can continue to send our support to the sisters and how, how can we be supportive of Funkhaze's work? Um, so great question. Thanks, Stacey. San Jose is not a relief organization. I should like let everybody know that. Um, we focus on microfinance and long-term sustainability and having communities be able to really uh, determine what their needs are and be able to address them um, with support from the outside and, and, and internally. So as when the earthquake happened on August 14th, we really, we have 13,000 clients in the South and we have four branches um, that have been really damaged. We have a total of seven. Um, Akan, the branch in Akan has, is completely like deteriorated. It's not gonna be able to be um, rehabilitated. We're gonna have to rebuild the whole thing. And so over the, the course of the last month, Franco Day has been, thanks to the generosity of so many people, raised a little bit over $500,000 to be able to do distribution of hygiene kits, provide PTSD counseling to our staff, provide um, cash grants to the staff. Because the thing that I think most people forget is that organizations like Franco Day, who all of their staff are Haitian, they're not like foreigners that come in and, and are working as expats, but all of them are Haitian. The fam they're, they're, they're experiencing this trauma too. And they're experiencing it both from the loss of uh, their material possessions they're, they're experiencing it from the loss of like, if they lost family members or loved ones or friends, which some people have. Um, in fact, we have lost about 15 clients um, as a result of the earthquake. So people that, you know, used to be our, our partner. Um, and then they also just have that trauma from 2010, from the Matthew uh, hurricane in 2016, which also hit the area. So there's a lot there. And so Franco Day really kind of focused on what it is that we can do in the immediate. Obviously everybody needs access to hygiene kits. Obviously everyone needs access to be able to have some money to get their, their, their self situated and, and be able to, to kind of move forward. And then we did a full assessment on what do our clients need? Where do their business look like? Do they need more time to pay back their loans? Do their loans need to be forgiven? In the case of those that have passed away, we have a program as, that is linked to their lending that provides them with basically money for like a, a life insurance, but basically it's money for funeral services, their loans get paid off, all of those things. So that family doesn't carry that burden of the, of the business loan um, if their loved one happens to pass away. So that was the immediate response that we had within days of the, of the earthquake. And long-term, we are looking to connect our clients with organizations that are rebuilding homes. We are looking to do more recovery work, which will be around um, making sure that or families continue to get PTSD support. Um, who, what does it look like for their businesses going forward? If people want to relocate, because maybe they don't want to stay in that community for whatever reason, how do we make that happen for them? So that's, that's kind of the approach that Franco Zay has. And this is not the first time Franco Zay has been responding to an emergency, right? 2010 was a huge, was a huge, was huge for us. Our um, head office in Port-au-Prince was completely flattened and we had to rebuild the entire building um, so that we can withstand an earthquake in the future. 
Uh, but we are going to continue to provide services to our clients, financial and otherwise, for as long as for as long as necessary, because we're not going anywhere since we are Haitian and our staff are all Haitian. So we will continue to be there into into perpetuity, I guess is the best word. <coughs> Sorry, pardon me. Thank you so much, Mabel. Um, I wonder if there are other questions um, from anybody on this call for Mabel, um, for the sisters. I'd, I'd like to open it up for some general Q&A time. Last time, last time we find a little money we sent to Le Baudac, eh? to just to buy water and medic medicines, uh, other uh, urgent uh, stuff, food, food. Some people say they want cement and rock because they want to rebuild their house. <laughs> I said, no, this little money can buy cement and rock. May both people want block cement. Mary Jean has a question. Thanks, sisters. Yes, Mary Jean. Um, I'm wondering if Franc, Franc Jose or the sisters have noticed a lot of people migrating, leaving. Um, in Tijuana, which is Mexico, you know, right on the border of San Diego, many, many Haitians are there and they have been coming there's a caravan that's on its way of about, they think, a thousand Haitians. And I'm just wondering if, you know, migration leaving Haiti has affected, or if you see that. Um, Either we have or the sisters. We have seen that in the last, so I think in the last 18 months, um, with all of, well, starting back with the, with the lockdowns that the country had, then the political unrest, the gang violence. I think people who have the means have been, have been immigrating uh, to other countries. Even those that don't have the means will borrow and, you know, whatever they need to do to get somewhere else. San Jose staff uh, in Port-au-Prince have immigrated in the last year and we have lost uh, lost them to to movement to another country so it is it is true that it is happening but not not everyone can leave Haiti unfortunately um, because they don't have the means and they don't have people on the outside that can support them doing that and also it's difficult right like it's not just as easy as showing up which is what I tell people you don't just roll up to an embassy and be like, oh, hey, I want to go to this country. Like, that's not how it works. And so not everyone has the ability to do that. But migration is happening. And I should also mention that out migration from Haiti to other countries is happening. And in the United States, people are being deported back to Haiti. Uh, that is not ending, even during the pandemic and even with all the challenges that are happening in the country. Uh, and that's all I will say about that. And I think this, the sisters work primarily with um, people of, of few means. Um, and, and so they don't have, have a choice. Um, but I would say that the insecurity in the country, the sisters had two sisters kidnapped earlier this year. So the insecurity in the country is forcing more people to take very desperate means to get out. Until today, yes. I, I think I think that at on the heels of the assassination of, of President Moise, a lot of people made like big exits to leave the country, especially those people like like you said, Barbara, who have means, right? Like they sold all their stuff and they were out, like they were out. I think folks, folks, the poor are always the most vulnerable because they don't have the resources to be able to sell, to be able to go anywhere or really change, and so. Those are the people that, that, that Franco Jose and the sisters serve 
which will continue to need the support of organizations because they don't have any other options. Like there's no ability for them to be like, oh, let me sell this land that doesn't belong to me so that I can go and live somewhere else. That's just, it's not an option. But another thing that Loretto is doing, which is huge, is letting people write checks to Sisters of Loretto and you keep the money safe. And then either in the days when I could go, and hopefully that will come soon, um, I would take it. Or now we wire the money. Loretto doesn't keep a cent of that. And I'm finding that I've gotten um, connections with the diaspora, the, the Haitians who have lived in the U.S. who are saying we want to help. And so Loretto is helping because that chain is there. Um, and to to get aid to whether it's the sisters or or someone else, uh, so Loretto's a big a big part of this. It really is. Thank you, Barbara. Um, there's another question, Rosa. Thanks, Stacy. Well, this is so interesting. Thank you so much, um, sisters and and Mabel and Barbara for this presentation. Um, I, it just brings up so many questions <laughs> for me, um, but, um, you know, on a larger scale, just in terms of, you know, the impact of, of climate change and, and the, the impact of, of that on, on, as you were saying, you know, the most vulnerable, the, the most impoverished, um, and, and how that, um, that also, um, how climate change and the disasters are impacting um, Haiti's um, increasing debt and, and being one of the most um, uh, impoverished countries in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, you know, what, what those, those impacts you might be seeing on the ground or with the, with the population that you work with, Mabel, um, your clients, as you're saying, um, impressive that that um, Foncoze has been um, so successful all these many many years. Um, in it really um, because of of the the work on on microfinance and and you know I, from what I've read um, and I work um, with groups at the UN so, and with women's group primarily some of those programs are not as favorable to some women with high, you know, imposing high interest and stuff. Um, but also just because of, you know, corruption. So um, I, I congratulate you all for, for just doing just what an incredible job. I, I was reading up on your work yesterday on your website. Um, and um, an impressive, you know, 80% of your clients are, are women. Um, and I, I'm, I'm wondering um, in terms of that, if, if you are providing economic literacy programs to, um, to the women or to younger women or you know, younger men um, in terms of you know, how to be able to understand this better and to be able to, you know, get out of poverty. Um, and, um, you know, maybe you can um, provide just, you know, information about, about, um, about that um, and, and a little bit more about your program. Thank you. Yeah, so the the, the interesting thing about Francoze, which I think is a little bit different than other microfinance institutions, is that it really it has a foundation connected to the to the microfinance. So um, we provide various types of loan products. And so when you talk a little bit about the interest rates not being favorable uh, to, to clients, it, interest rates vary on the types of loan products that that loan that clients um, access. And then depending on the type of client that they are, there is a uh, kind of a, a package of services that they also receive, including financial literacy and being able to understand how it is that 
the money I invest in my business it also needs to be, there's got to be money that I keep for my family and that not everything goes to my family and then not everything goes to my business. And what, is, what does that look like? And so client, our clients have credit officers that work with them on a, on a monthly basis to do trainings in, the, in their communities and in their credit groups. And so they get together and they, they learn. And then from that learning, there also are women that become centered chiefs. So these are more women that have been more, uh, I guess they've just been in the, maybe in the program longer or identified by other women in their community as someone of respect. And so those women are trained and are provided um, additional opportunities to grow businesses or, and then become women in the community who are uh, really looked to for information, and then they do basically what is training of tra of trainers, um, if if you will. So the program is really r rather holistic. And there was a woman the first time I had never been to Haiti prior to joining Franco Jose. I'll be I'll be completely honest with you. I've always worked with it tangentially through my other work in international development, but had never been there myself. And so on my 40th birthday, I got to go to Haiti. Um, and spend and spend time there. And one of the women that I met had been with San Jose for approximately eight years. And she started in one of these little, you know, credit groups. And by the time I met her, she'd had her own depot. She had a rental company of trucks. She's traveling the Caribbean, moving things into the country. And she's like demanding, I need a higher loan amount, I need lower interest rates. And so that's kind of the thing for me that is the most impressive is that when you give women an opportunity to choose for themselves, to decide for themselves, they're the ones that are going to make, be making the demands on how it is that they want these things structured because it is to their best benefit and to be able to grow their businesses. They, be, they learn these tools and then run with it. Um, and that's really kind of the focus of Fonc Jose. And, and we have different kinds of loans. Like there are people that get out of the credit groups and stay with Fonc Jose in their businesses for the long term because that relationship that we have built um, so I, I feel like, I, I hope that for Haiti, that Franco Jose just becomes kind of the prominent and the foremost organization that people just look to when they think about starting a business or, or, or lending, because the support structures are there in such a way that they're not with other financial institutions. And I'm going to speak for the sisters, because I know time is waning here, but, um, one of the reasons I've been with them for so long is, um, they remind me of Loretto so much. Um, they, they were founded to work with the rural poor of Haiti. Uh, they have, if they have a rule, if they cut down a tree, they must plant 10 more. And Loretto has helped them plant some of those trees. Um, they have schools that they have programs for the benefit of women. And these were things that they came up with when their order was founded. Uh, so, you know, there's, they're really thinking kind of the way Loretto thinks, um, and they're indigenous, they're Haitian women helping Haitians. Thank you, Barbara. And I want to call everybody's attention to Teresa. Thank you for adding um, some information in the chat. Um, would you like to provide any context? Um, I know I've, I've copied that so that we can get it to folks in writing after this call too. Sure, uh, thank you. Without taking too much time, um, I just wanted to invite everybody uh, to take advantage of an opportunity uh, that you all have as, um, as a community that has representation with a UN NGO, Loretto at the UN. Um, I am currently working with a, a large group of NGOs that includes the Loretto Office at the UN uh, on creating a few joint statements that will be contributed to UN conferences happening early next year. Uh, one, you may have heard of them before, one's a conference on social development and the other on the status of women. Uh, and we're currently in the process of drafting uh, written statements that we would contribute to those conferences. Um, and one relates to um, work toward reducing poverty and hunger. And the other statement relates to uh, women and girls in the context of climate change. And that's kind of a dual um, invitation. Uh, we'll include talking about how climate change 
impacts women and girls, but we'll also talk about how women and girls are responding and, and acting as leaders in reducing or mitigating climate change and adapting to it. Um, so it's kind of a, a dual approach on that second statement. So I put links in the chat box um, for anybody who might like to have some input. We're looking to get contributions from different corners of the world. So you might personally have something to share or perhaps like Barbara, you're in touch with communities in different regions who might have some insights to share. So uh, I would welcome you to share those links with anyone you think might have a, a, an important voice to share in the process. And we are looking for those contributions by September 30th. Perfect, Teresa, thank you so much. Um, what a, a great way to kind of bring us all full circle here too. Um, I want to be respectful of everybody's time, so we are going to wrap up, though I'm confident we could probably continue talking all day together. I know I still have more questions for Mabel um, and for the sisters. Um, for those who are on our LACC listserv, I will share what Teresa put in the chat um, and some links should you want to follow up. I'll connect with Barbara to see what information we can um, get in there for any who would like to continue to contribute to the sisters. Um, thank you all so much. I'm so grateful, Mabel, for your time uh, connecting with our community. Sisters, thank you for um, making time and working through those technical challenges and, and getting online. We're so excited to see you. Um, thank you, Barbara, for uh, making some of those connections for us and, and sharing that beautiful connection. So. Um, thank you all. Please stay in touch and have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks, Stacey. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.